Hi, in today's video, I want to talk about a very interesting aspect about the Bohr model of the atom, which is basically the quantization of electron wave. Now to do that, first I want to spend a very small time discussing the Rutherford model, the deficiencies in the Rutherford model, the Bohr model, and when we apply the de Broglie's hypothesis, how we end up getting the quantization. So in 1911, after performing a series of experiments, Rutherford discovered that majority of the mass of the atom is concentrated in what he called the nucleus, which is situated at the center of the atom. And then he proposed what is known as the planetary model of the atom. So he said that in the same way that in the solar system, you have planets revolving around the sun in circular or elliptical orbits due to gravitational attraction, in that same manner, inside the atom, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular orbits. At that point of time, this was a very new and very interesting uh, model for the atom itself, but it was discarded quite soon because of some deficiencies. Now, first of all, unlike an electrically neutral and a huge massive object like a planet which is going around the sun, when we talk about the atom, electrons are charged particles. Now when charged particles revolve around a positively charged nucleus, then they are constantly accelerating. According to Maxwell's laws of classical electrodynamics, if a charged particle is continuously accelerating, then it should lose energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation and its orbit should become smaller and smaller and smaller as it collapses into the nucleus. The time period for such a collapse for a typical nuclei should be very, very small, around 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. However, we don't see that happening around us. We see mostly stable atomic structures in most of the elements. So that was one of the reasons. The second reason is that it did not explain the absorption and the emission spectra of different chemical elements. Now, what is the absorption and emission spectra? To explain the absorption spectra in very simple terms, when an atom is either releasing energy or absorbing energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, then that radiation has energy which falls in discrete levels and not in a continuous spectra. If you look at the Rutherford model, however, there is no restriction whatsoever on the orbits of the electron themselves. So the electron can theoretically revolve around a nucleus in an infinite number of possible orbits. So if you look at it from that point of view, the absorption of the emission spectra should be a continuous spectrum and not necessarily discrete. A discrete absorption spectra suggests that the energy levels or the orbits of a given atom themselves are discrete in nature. To overcome these deficiencies, Niels Bohr proposed what is known as the Bohr model of the atom. In his first postulate, he said that the electron is revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits. He borrowed this from the Rutherford model of the atom. However, to overcome the deficiencies of the Rutherford model, he proposed his second statement. In his second postulate, he said that instead of there being an infinite number of possible electron orbits, the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in certain restricted orbits only. And the restriction of these orbits is, is given by what is known as the quantization principle. So he said, that only those orbits are allowed in an atom in which the angular momentum of the electron is an integral multiple of the Planck's constant divided by twice pi. He also said that if an electron is indeed revolving in one of these orbits, then that electron is not going to lose energy as it is revolving around the nucleus. And to explain the emission and the absorption spectra, he said that every time an electron jumps higher up, in an energy level or jumps down to a lower level, there is going to be uh, absorption or an emission of electromagnetic radiation and the energy of that electromagnetic radiation will be equal to difference between the energy levels of both these two different allowed orbits and thereby explaining the nature of absorption and the emission spectrum. Now, Niels Bohr did not come about this particular quantization principle just randomly out of thin air. He came about just so as to explain the nature of the absorption spectra. So in summary, these are the main postulates of the Bohr model of the atom. So before we talk about the uh, quantization of the electron wave as a general principle, let's look at a very small example. In this case, I have taken the example of a hydrogen atom in its ground state. 
So according to the uh, planetary model, the electron is revolving around the hydrogen atom nucleus in a circular orbit. And the condition for the stability of this kind of an orbit is given by this particular equation in which the coulombic forces between the electron and the proton is providing the necessary centripetal force which keeps the particular electron in orbit. So here the E is the electronic charge, R is the radius of the particular orbit and V is the orbital velocity with which the electron is revolving around in the particular case of the orbit. M is the mass of the electron. Now from this particular equation I want to obtain an expression for the velocity of the electron. Why do I need the velocity? You'll just get to know in a second. So this is an expression for the orbital velocity of the electron as it revolves around the nucleus. So now comes the interesting part. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to apply the de Broglie's hypothesis. Just to give a very brief idea what the de Broglie's principle is. So de Broglie said that if a particle, any particle is moving with some kind of velocity, then there is a wave associated with the motion of that particle. This kind of a wave is known as matter wave. So there is a particular wavelength associated with this motion of the electron as it goes around this particular nucleus. De Broglie said that this wavelength of any moving particle is inversely proportional to its momentum. So let's apply the de Broglie's hypothesis and see what we get. So the de Broglie's hypothesis says that the wavelength of any matter wave associated with the motion of a particle is inversely proportional to the momentum of that particle itself where the constant of proportionality is given by h where h is the Planck's constant. So in this particular expression I'm going to substitute this particular velocity expression that we just obtained. So we have obtained an expression for the particular wavelength of this electron as it goes around the nucleus. And this expression contains most of them are constants. We are going to use the example for a hydrogen atom. So the hydrogen atom has an orbit radius in its ground state of around 0.53 angstroms, which is 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11 meters. I'm going to substitute all of these values of the constants and see what value of wavelength we get. So substituting the values for these constants, I obtain a number which is 33.27 into 10 to the minus 11 meters. Now there is some, there's something very special about this particular number. So you will realize that once you divide this number with 2 multiplied by 5.3 into 10 to the minus 11, which is the radius. In that case, you get a number which is close to 3.14 something. So which is nothing but the number pi. So what does that mean? That means that 33.27 into 10 to the minus 11 meters can be written as 2 times pi times the radius that we have taken in this particular case, which is 5.3 into 10 to the minus 11 meters. This is 2 pi r, which is nothing but the circumference of the orbit. So the wavelength of the electron as it is going around this nucleus is exactly equal to the circumference of the orbit itself. Now think about it because this is very interesting. As the electron is moving around the orbit, there is a wave associated with that electron motion. And that wave has a wavelength which is exactly equal to the circumference of the orbit as the electron goes around the nucleus. So the orbit of the electron in the hydrogen atom corresponds to one complete electron wave joined to itself. The electron wave forms a complete standing wave pattern. Now is it, is it a coincidence or there is something more to it? Now to get an idea let's look at the general quantization principle that Bohr himself gave. Now Bohr in his second postulate said that the electron can only revolve around the nucleus in restricted orbits where this condition is met that the angular momentum of the electron must be an integral multiple of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Now what is the angular momentum of an electron as it goes around in a circular orbit? It is given by 
L is equal to m v r. V is the orbital velocity, m is the mass of the particle, and r is the radius in which that particle is going about in a circular orbit. So if this is the angular momentum of the electron, and this is the quantization that is given by Bohr, then m v r is equal to n h pi 2 pi. So if you bring 2 pi on the other side and take mv on the other side so this becomes 2 pi r is equal to n h by m v now this particular quantity h by m v is nothing but the de broglie wavelength of any moving particle which is moving at a velocity v and having mass m so this becomes 2 pi r is equal to n lambda so the quantization of the bohr model takes a new form the moment we apply de Broglie's hypothesis where we get a new quantization principle which is basically 2 pi r is equal to n lambda where n can take values of 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth. So the circumference of the orbit in which the particle is moving is exactly equal to integral multiples of the wavelength of that matter wave associated with that particle motion. So now the quantization principle takes a new form. Only those orbits are allowed in the atomic structure in which the circumference of the orbit is an integral multiple of the wavelength of the electron. That means we have orbits where the circumference is twice that of the wavelength of the electron, where the circumference is thrice that of the wavelength of the electron, where the circumference is four times the wavelength of an electron and so on and so forth. Now based on this idea, we can also get an understanding of why certain orbits are allowed and why others are not. So if you imagine a standing wave formed on a string, you will find that for a stable system, the length of the string is an integral multiple of its wavelength. Now if we join the end points of that string to form a loop, this is what we are getting in the case of an atom. Now if the wire were to be perfectly elastic, these vibrations would continue indefinitely. If, however, a fractional number of wavelengths is placed around the loop, then you get destructive interference as the wave travels around the loop and comes and joins itself at a point which is different from the earlier phase. And these vibrations then die out rapidly. If on the other case, you have those orbits where the electron wave forms integral wavelengths, then the wave as it travels around the nucleus comes and joins itself at that same phase. Therefore, you end up getting constructive interference and the electron wave does not die out. So basically, you end up getting an atom of discrete energy levels and only certain restricted allowed orbits where the electron wave associated with the movement of the electron forms wavelengths which go around the nucleus and joins itself at the same point and end up giving constructive interference. Any other orbit where the circumference is a fractional multiple of the wavelength of the electron ends up giving you destructive interference and you end up getting no orbit whatsoever. This is the interesting feature of the Bohr model of the atom that I wanted to talk about. Now maybe next time when you look at the structure of the atom instead of thinking of the atom like this you can think of the atom maybe like this. That's it for today. Thank you very much.